Hi, uh, I'm Milton Chang of Bonsai Heirloom, and this is my Leon Shih Tzu, which is my daughter just clipped him and I gave him a bath. He's looking pretty good. Say hi. Let me tell you a little bit about the uh, big Japanese maple we just uh, took a picture of. A week or two ago when we did the Q&A, someone asked about this tree. And so today I'll tell you a little bit about that tree, but I'll do it in the shade. I saw this uh, big Japanese lacy maple in a, uh, someone's uh, yard. It turns out to be somebody in the landscaping business. And I asked if he, he would sell it. That was Friday when I was there. And he said he would get somebody to, to dig it up half out of the ground already uh, on Saturday morning, and then I can pick it up on Sunday. So I went back on Sunday, and uh, he had a dug. But with the people there, we just could not get it onto the, uh, the rental trailer that I rented to, to carry it back to, to bring it back to um, California. So uh, I drove down the street and saw a nursery with a forklift. Just to show you people in the farming community, they are very helpful to each other. And the fellow actually agreed to drive this forklift about a half mile to, uh, to help me lift that back on, uh, to lift it up into the, uh, the trailer. So we used some rope and chain to tie it to the trailer and I drove it all the way back home. In fact, a little bit of fishtailing. That's what I did when I was younger. When I wanted something, I really go for it and I wouldn't have gotten it. And since then we planted next to the house and it's grown a lot. And this winter I'll try to trim it. I haven't touched it yet, but this winter I would cut it back to shape and eventually look even nicer. So the point is that this is now a um, let's say 30 plus 25, it's a 50, 60 year old tree. And I think it will look uh, nice because it will be uh, highly unusual to have it in the garden. So anyway, that's a tree since uh, someone wrote and asked. And uh, so I tell you a little bit about it. Also really to share with you my personality and it's a little bit of what you have to do if you want something for your bonsai material, you just gotta go and get it. So maybe what I would, would be good is to let's do a Q&A. Good morning, Dr. Chang. I'm big, a fan of yours from Italy. I'd like to know how, how you started the bonsai and more or less uh, your journey uh, on how to get here. And uh, say, I, I, I hope I'm not uh, being intrusive, intrusive and have a nice day. That's nice of him. So I started uh, as a boy uh, I would say about 12 years, 15 years old. And my father and I uh, pick up a uh, coral rock. It's actually fairly solid coral rock, not uh, with arms, but just a piece of rock. And we uh, drill a hole through it and plant a little elm. I would say today I would call it the Catlin elm into it. And we kept it on our veranda. That's about the only bonsai we had, but uh, that's my beginning of a, of a bonsai. And when I left for America to go to college, uh, that tree was still there then. And when I w started working, uh, bonsai kind of became a very relaxing uh, hobby for me. And so I picked that up again. And I went and took classes and so forth. And my father was uh, basically a uh, work on a merchant ship uh, so we didn't spend much time together. So that was that became one of the, my links with my father. And so that's my connection to my family in some sense. And so it has a special meaning for me. Uh, then I took classes from uh, John, uh, actually Harry Hirao it was my first teacher. And I also uh, took lessons from John Naka who is considered the pioneer of uh, uh, American bonsai. And uh, so that's how I began. And during work uh, as, uh, for a startup company, uh, work was very high pressure in the sense that I worked very hard 20 uh, for seven, uh, no vacation for 11 years. Uh, bonsai become a relaxation for me. It's a stress management tool. 
And so that was very helpful. That's another reason why I want to share bonsai with everybody because it's uh, in today's stressful world where there's a lot of mental issues, I think bonsai can be of great deal of help. Um, beyond that, I think bonsai um, can build community relationship like in bonsai club, uh, which is actually on the decline because I think more young people are interested in video games but uh, it's a great place where you meet uh, all walks of life in the community and to share good ideas with each other. I think it's a really good thing. So with that in mind then, that's why I'm uh, highly devoted to bonsai to promote it as a hobby. Okay, the next one I see is called uh, Greasy Limpet. Hello, Greasy. Uh, thank you again for your fantastic video. You are so helpful to everyone. I got an oak that is probably five inches thick. I cut it down to 15 inches tall with the hope that it will shoot out some new branches. Is it best to leave it in the ground or would you say to dig it up? I can say stay where it is so it can grow faster a couple of years. Uh, I think you're right. Uh, I think you should leave it in the ground uh, so that it will grow faster. So basically what I would do is that if you have a five inches thick, um, trunk, uh, you probably have a 20 feet tall or 15 feet tall tree. So I'll cut it down to maybe this high. So when it grow a little bit, it would, the whole tree will be about this high, maybe eight inches diameter, that would be about the right size and get a pot about this size, that would be nice. And so uh, what you do is you top the tree at the height that I suggested, and then something will grow out and you make that the apex. So when it got to be too high again, you let it grow for a year or two and you chop it again, and then you pick a new apex. This way you get a nice turn. And at the end, you will have a tree of the height that you wanted it to be. And when you chop it, it will force the lower branches to grow and you let it grow and design it to the shape that you wanted for the final tree. And doing so, it's nice because you get the tree at the end about the right height but also very nice taper with the uh, uh, lower branches at the right places. So yes, uh, so that's what you do. And yes, I recommend that you leave it in the ground. And then when you're ready to dig it a, a year or so before that, I would dig around the tree, let's say one third around the tree, let's say this far apart from the trunk. And then you do about one third again next year, and then one third again next year, or next half a year. This way, uh, fibrous roots will grow out of the middle. And then when you dig it up, uh, you can be pretty brutal, pretty rough about it to pull it up. You will have a small root ball because the, that's how far the uh, fibrous will be, but you will have a very, very deep uh, root. So you have to kind of cut it below to lift it off the ground. Uh, use a, a saw or a, a heavy shovel. And then, um, then you will plant it in a deep pot, big deep pot. And when there's even more fibrous roots, then you begin to cut off the bottom, the solid wood, as I've done in, in, for my tree. And by the way, the tree that we cut up, I would say three weeks ago, a tremendous amount of uh, growth has uh, occurred. A lot of shoots come out. So in the next uh, couple of three months, I would um, cut it again to show you how to shape it. Although I should really leave it alone uh, to let it thicken, but I, I need to sort of compromise the bowl to give you a demonstration of how to convert a, uh, a yadori tree. So have fun with it. I think you will have a magnificent oak. The ne next one is called, it's just must settle, senile. What if I make a bonsai and I want the trunk to always have that wet look, I can use a teak oil or varnish on the dead spot that turned gray. You know, uh, this is really a uh, artistic question. Uh, you know, what turns you on in a sense, what do you think it's a good looking uh, uh, bonsai? I think we are too hung up on following the tradition there is no reason to follow the tradition aside from learning from what they do and then transcend what they do uh, in a sense to improve. And in the case of, uh, in fact, I'll do a um, 
very old cell cobra shortly, and the backside is totally a piece of wood, and the front is the, the trunk. Uh, for example, someone can actually, I, I probably will not do it, can totally polish the back and then varnish it and make it shine like a piece of furniture in the back in contrast with something totally ancient trunk in the front. I think that would be spectacular if you put it on a rotating table. People absolutely will ooh and ah about a bonsai that's totally different. So again, I encourage you to use your creativity to create a bonsai to your liking. Okay, yes, you can varnish and you can uh, polish or you can do whatever you like on the, on the wood. The next one is uh, Mike Swain. Hello, Mike. Uh, does that make any difference if you use a fertilizer basket or simply scatter the, the, the fertilizer on the soil surface? Well, you can do both. Uh, I personally don't use the cage. Uh, I think uh, there's no need for it. Uh, I think it's a good idea to put uh, fertilizer in concentrated places. Uh, and if you do want to spray, uh, spread, uh, spread it out thinly so you don't over fertilize to kill all of the roots. Because what, if you put it in lumps, uh, the, the fertilizer will go down, uh, maybe kill some of the roots right there, but it will not kill all of the roots of the bonsai, which really is actually quite good. It will, encourage the remaining roots to get a lot of fertilizer. So I, I think to, for beginners, I recommend liquid fertilizer, about a half of the concentration, maybe twice, twice the frequency. Uh, I also recommend uh, slow release, re release fertilizer, again, follow the instruction, uh, for, to encourage the growth of uh, green moss. I actually uh, recommend uh, spreading uh, chicken pellet man um, pelletized chicken manure. You, you put a little bit of water in it, it will, it will dissolve very quickly, become powdery, and then you spread a uh, surface of the bonsai. Uh, you will find trees really love it, so with the moss. So uh, yes, uh, you can use bas basket or not. So there are a lot of questions about fertilizer and all that. So uh, this is a bag of uh, chicken manure pellets. Uh, actually, it doesn't even smell. Uh, you can see these are pellets. Uh, this is a 25-pound bag. I got it from a, uh, a supplier in Petaluma, California. But you can actually buy a small amount of bags of this in Amazon. I, I mentioned the name Amazon a number of times. I'm not the agent but it is a convenient place to ship, uh, shop because they ship uh, as part of the cost. Um, so what I do is that you can uh, spread that uh, onto your bonsai uh, evenly. I would say maybe, let's say like this kind of a, a density, um, in a sense that not too dense, like, like about this density, right? Uh, on your bonsai, that should be fine. And what I do actually is that I take a, f a fair amount and I um, put water in it. And uh, let it sit for, let's say half an hour, an hour, uh, and then the, I, uh, I, I, I will pour out some of the water that's a little too much. And in a little while, it, it breaks up and you can spread it like powder uh, on top of your um, bonsai, and th that actually spreads out fairly evenly, and so that's nice. Uh, the other one I use is actually, you, sh you, you should know, is this uh, um, the best brand. Uh, that's a, a slow release fertilizer that will last uh, two to three months, and these are very inexpensive. Uh, you see, it's a, t a lot of nitrogen, 25, uh, and um, uh, they really make the tree grow very fast. But if you want more flowering and uh, root growing and all that, then you, you choose a different ratio, but they come in different ratio. Uh, the cost is about 35 pound bag. It's about $40, so it's really cheap. And you can spread that by, uh, sparingly. 
Uh, less is more because you may want just kill the, the bonsai by over fertilizing. And so that's another good fertilizer to use, but uh, you can use the small amount such as Osmoco, uh, that should work very well as well. Uh, and there are very, very, various kind of slow, slow releasing fertilizers you can use. Aside from that, use your imagination, you know, uh, compost or whatever. Uh, they should all work fine, but uh, be a little careful with the manure in general. Like horse manure and cow manure tend to have uh, salt because they give them salt lake. Uh, whereas chicken, they actually don't have um, salt. Uh, uh, what do they give, feed them is also sand, uh, which is also okay for the bonsai uh, if, you, if you use it. So I, I like chicken manure. Uh, that's uh, pretty balanced with the three ingredients. Uh, and uh, I'd expect it to be all nitrogen, but it's not. It's got all the three components that you need. So with that, um, Use the fish and kelp. That's a good liquid fertilizer, which I use uh, every uh, now every week uh, during the summer. So have fun, healthy bonsai growing. So this is the uh, chicken manure that I added some water, oh, about say five minutes ago or 10 minutes ago. And now you can see it's all broken up quite a bit. It doesn't take much to just break it up all together. And if you let it sit a little bit longer, that will be totally powdery. And then I can spread it, like in this case, onto uh, this little bonsai. And I can just do this. And then when the water goes on there, uh, it will further uh, uh, dissolve it. So, so that if I do that, which, uh, uh, this is actually a Korean hornbeam. You can see it's growing lots and lots of new leaves. Uh, with that, uh, it will give it a big spurt again. It's how beautiful green, uh, soft green it is. And look at how much this, uh, my 25 year old Trident maple has grown in a few days. Uh, we uh, kind of cut it back to shape it, but came right back out. And so it's a misconception to think, but the bones are as looks good all the time. It isn't. You want to let it grow so it strengthens it, and then you cut it back just before the show. And let's say you will cut it back to totally and remove all the leaves in the case of a, a trident maple six weeks before show. Uh, and then the, uh, when it comes out, all the leaves will be nice and new and beautiful in the right places. And you get the impression that the bones are always perfectly beautiful all the time, which is untrue, okay? This is about your trident sumo, shellac shabon. Did you dig the tree trunk up yourself? I have a lot of these trees, trunks, and sent off so many shoots. The, the roots travel so far out and some are very deep. What is the best way to remove them in the ground to grow into bonsai? Well, that's really what I said earlier. What you do is say you dig around it, and especially when you have a big uh, root, uh, take a chainsaw, uh, not chainsaw, a uh, reciprocal saw, cut it not too far from the trunk, and then gradually reduce it by keeping the design in mind. And then uh, take up one-third, 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 either quarter or uh, quarterly or uh, semi-annually or annually. And so take it up in phases. And I found there's a shovel that's long and skinny. It's very, very heavy. I think it's 15, 20 pounds. And you can use it uh, to just to uh, uh, hack the tree at the roots. And that makes it very easy for the tree to come up. I think professional uh, Yamadori collectors do that. And uh, that's why they can collect so many Yamadori and <laughs> destroy the, the habitat uh, in the meantime, but they can get their trees down out quickly. Uh, this is about your I think I give up on names because they are so creative. Uh, what is about your propagation? This is about your propagation video. Does it work without any root hormone? Uh, I, I don't have any, but my 20 trident cuttings haven't rooted in water in past two weeks. Well, first of all, it takes two weeks to uh, root. Uh, I really haven't tried to root them in water, although I don't see any reason why 
You cannot. Uh, I would suggest that you change your water once or twice a day so the water doesn't get stale to encourage the root growth. Uh, I do that uh, very successfully uh, with uh, some of the vegetables, um, and uh, uh, which works uh, really well. Uh, but I, I encourage to use uh, root, uh, uh, rooting hormone because that does uh, encourage us the uh, rooting process. Uh, I know some uh, yes, a YouTube video uh, shows people from uh, places in Southeast Asia uh, actually use aloe, the sap from aloe, uh, very successfully. And I also uh, was told that you can use aspirin uh, because aspirin is a derivative from the, the, the bark of willow tree, which uh, roots very easily in water. You can take a uh, willow branch about this thick and you just dig it in the ground uh, right next to a river bank and they would uh, root and grow to hold the soil. So um, yes, uh, but it takes more than two weeks. Uh, this is the uh, uh, Trident maple cuttings that we did, I would say about four weeks ago, and it's already rooted and growing quite a bit, maybe six weeks ago. Uh, you can see uh, in one week it grew that much uh, with a little bit of fertilizer on it. And if I pull it out to show you, like this guy, uh, it's hard to pull it out, I hate to break the thing. Let me dig down a little bit to get it out. I really don't babysit my trees. I'm very brutal with it, but you can see uh, that's how, how, how much it grew uh, from a cutting. Uh, I said I'd do a little longer one to make a forest. Um, in fact, when I do the forest, I should be careful to maybe bend it so that this grow out to be more straight because the uh, forest tree tend to be straight up. If you don't do it, they tend to be a little king, which is okay too, but I, I would prefer to have a forest that's straight. And so that's what I do, I plant them in a pot. And I have, uh, in this case, in, one, uh, in, a, in an hour, uh, I have a forest of a 25. So anyway, so this is how fast they grow. And here at least have 25 trees just sitting down uh, you know, uh, rooting the scraps from my 25-year-old uh, uh, trident maple. By the way, this is a very good variety. You can see, comparing this one with this one, uh, this is the um, one you get here uh, in most nurseries. And this is the one I started from a seed. Uh, you can see the leaves are much more glossy, uh, thicker. Uh, maybe almost the same, but I found this uh, the leaves tend not to dry out as much uh, in the summer. So um, there are a lot of fine tuning you can do in growing your tree. Look at this, it's amazing, huh? This is about the, your coastal live oak video. Did you do this root work in spring or right now in summer? If now is a recommend to do heavy root work on coastal live oak in summer? Well, you can, but that's assuming you have some fibrous roots remaining. And also you always remember to uh, compensate, to cut off as much as the, the branches possible to compensate for the root loss. But I would say in the summer, uh, first of all, I think it's really best to do in the springtime. Uh, but if you do do it in the summertime, because sometimes you have to dig it during the summer, then uh, remove as little of the roots, destroy as little of the roots as possible, and then the, remove the compensate by cutting off a lot of leaves, they shoot out very quickly anyway, and then the, uh, then cut off the roots gradually over time, the, the big roots. What is the best way to germinate cherry blossom and when you should plant them? Uh, I would do a, uh, a longer Q&A today, uh, not Q&A, but uh, kind of a topical Q&A on uh, collecting seeds. Uh, I don't have any experience in growing cherry trees, but I suspect it's not uh, difficult. Uh, the problem with growing flowering trees, uh, in this case cherry, there are a couple. One is that it takes a long time to flower. Uh, I think three years would be fast, probably more like eight to ten years. Uh, and then when it does blossom, uh, you never know the quality of the blossom. 
So, um, and if you do want to collect it, uh, I will talk a little bit more about it, is to crack the seats open, uh, dry out the, uh, the, <coughs> the pit in the sun, and then crack it open and get out the kernel, and uh, that's dried by then, and refrigerate it for uh, 30 to 60 days or even 90 days, and then you plant it in the springtime. Uh, that should readily germinate. Uh, I've very successfully done that uh, with uh, um, peach trees and so forth. Is there anything beyond cage I can put around some of my young trees to prevent what I believe are squirrels damaging them? A spray maybe? I do have squirrels, but they don't seem to bother my bonsai tree much. Uh, one time, I th somebody, I don't know, bird or squirrel ate uh, t some of the tender leaves uh, on my uh, trident maple in the springtime. Uh, but there's plenty other material to, to eat. So I don't think it's a very severe issue. Uh, I went on the web and looked for it. Uh, I personally have used cages to trap them. And uh, it's not easy. They don't often go in there, but occasionally they do. And that's all I, all I need, just to catch a few squirrels uh, and then release them elsewhere. Um, one time it was funny, I asked my uh, gardener to release it far away, and he um, released it next to a freeway uh, with his car engine running, and the next thing you know, the squirrel ran back into his car, and he thinks he might have killed the squirrel. So you have to be a little careful where you release it, they, they tend to get a little frightened. Um, I went on the web, and it seems like there is a, um, a pellet or a ball uh, that's made out of garlic and uh, uh, mint oil. Uh, that's supposed to release scent that would discourage squirrel. Uh, another thing I read on the web is to use uh, pepper spray. Uh, so one time I bought a bottle of uh, uh, Tabasco sauce, uh, very inexpensive when you buy a big bottle from Costco. And I tried it and I think that kind of worked, but try it. Thank you very much. Uh, I do need the encouragement and also need to know, so love my uh, video, and I do need your feedback, so please listing, list your questions and so forth and comments uh, below so that I can address your questions and for future uh, Q&A sessions, and also uh, to know what videos to do uh, for the program. So please click uh, to subscribe our channel so that we can send you our new releases when it occurs. I expect to do several every week. And I hope to, with your input, uh, to create a community to cover all the subjects, or a lot of the subjects that are of um, interest. And one thing I want to emphasize is that to learn from the traditional bonsai methods, but I think I'm really trying to create a lifestyle bonsai which caters to the way you live. In a sense, if you think about it, apply what I say, you can uh, design your bonsai routine to fit your lifestyle. So I think we, together we can uh, do some good for the bonsai hobby. Thank you very much. See you next week.